When you're good, you're good. And when you're lucky, you're even better. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys and welcome back to another Historic Brawl video. Today we are checking out Ugin the Ineffable, but before we talk just briefly about the list, if you would please make sure you subscribe. We do release gameplay videos basically every day of the week at the very least, sometimes multiple times per day. Usually not on the weekends, but every once in a while we like to go a little above and beyond. Uh, now, we did just start jumping into Historic Brawl this week, so I'm going to link the previous video up in the, uh, the top corner here. If you want to go check that one out, it was really fun. It was a Niv-Mizzet build. Uh, before that, we had actually tried out the first sliver, both of which were really, really fun. And I'm looking to continue that fun today. Um, Ugin the Ineffable is obviously colorless, so the idea here is that this is a mono brown build, essentially providing us with a lot of tech in the lands because we really don't have to worry about trying to, to deal with colors or anything like that. What that allows us to do is really, really go crazy with the colorless lands and kind of have some fun with it. Uh, now, obviously, Artifact Ramp is very real, so we do have quite a bit of that with things like Mind Stone, uh, all the way through Cold Steel Heart, all kinds of fun stuff just to help ramp us into some of the bigger spells here at the top. Now, one of the big ones is actually Aetherflux Reservoir. The idea is that we can cheapen up a lot of our spells with Ugin. Uh, as well as a number of other things like Foundry Inspector, uh, and then play them for essentially either free or very close to free, uh, building up Aether, Aether Flux Reservoir for the win later on. This does have Mystic Forge, which allows us to play colorless cards, uh, excuse me, Technic, uh, no, uh, colorless, artifact and colorless. Just wanted to clarify and make sure I was giving you the right information, but essentially allows us to play stuff from the top of our deck, which is obviously quite helpful. Uh, and then at the very top end, uh, we've got some really backbreaking cards uh, that the opponent would have to deal with. Platinum Angel, obviously a nice little uh, anti-lose condition, I guess. Uh, but as well, Ugin is here and the other Ugin and then, of course, Ulamog as well. Uh, some really interesting stuff. So I'm excited to get into this. It's going to be a really fun time. Let's go ahead. We're going to spend 20 to 30 minutes kind of going through some games. Excuse me, we'll see how many we actually get in. I don't know 100% yet, but we'll do the best we can. Have some fun along the way. All right, guys, here we are for our first game here. This does have Karn, uh, the great creator. Very important to note, we don't have a sideboard here. Uh, I don't know why I didn't build the deck. I mean, I guess we just don't have access to a sideboard. So I think actually we're just going to free mulligan this. Oh, this is not good. Not good at all. Uh, Forsaken Monument, a very, very powerful card, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, one land is not doable. We're going to go ahead and mulligan one more time. Now, this we will keep, uh, if nothing else, just because we can't really do too much uh, else here. Now, do we put a land back or do we put the Colossus back? Um, I actually think it's not the Colossus. I think it's going to be... Uh, I think it's going to be this. Uh, so what we'll do, I think off of the face, is just go ahead and scry one here, see what we get. I actually really like that. Uh, this is a nice little ramper. Uh, so the Skyclave Relic, very, very good at ramping us and, and getting us where we need to be. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. We can throw this out. Uh, and the cheapening of the Colossus begins. This also does draw us a card, which is great. Uh, hit that Field of Ruin, which could actually blow up the Field of the Dead here if we need it to. Opponent is on Scarab God. I have not actually faced off against a Scarab God deck yet, so this is a bit of a first. Um, very interesting to see what we can do here. Uh, something we can consider, by the way, Chaos Wand is quite good. Um, now, we don't necessarily have to do it yet, but we can kind of pull the trigger on that and then just start stealing their stuff. Chaos Wand is a really fun card if you don't know what it does. Basically, you target an opponent uh, and then exile cards from the top of their deck until you hit an instant or sorcery. You then just get to play it for free, <laughs> uh, which is really cool and really powerful, in fact. Um, 
but obviously a little odd uh and so it's uh it's just different it's very different but we're gonna go ahead we're gonna play this out first uh and then we are gonna play that chaos wand out now uh and we actually just get to play the colossus for 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 free which is pretty good uh so now we are very well set up we should be able to get ugin down this coming turn as well if we'd like um I mean, this is a, a fairly solid turn. They do have to deal with this Colossus for sure, um, which they may just have a kill spell. Worth noting, it's very easy to deal with the Colossus, but uh, we do actually get to return it if we would like by just sacrificing a couple things, which I'm not opposed to doing. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I think I, I'm kind of liking this so far. I'm feeling okay. Um, okay. They lose a lot of life for that. Uh, cool. We're just going to pass. We're not going to, uh, most likely not going to sacrifice anything quite yet. We might later on, but we don't need to quite yet. I'm not going to, not going to stress about it. Wow. Icar Wellspring, a great card actually to have here. Um, okay. So is the, uh, is the assumption that they have a counter spell? Cause that very easily could be the case. If that's the case, we just Icar Wellspring and then Chaos Wand, which could be kind of fun. The only trick is if they, you never know what you're going to hit with the Chaos Wand. It could be not good stuff. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with the uh, Icar Wellspring. It looks like they didn't have a counter potentially. Um, and I'm going to do this. Let's just see what happens. I always like doing the Chaos Wand. It's just kind of a fun thing because uh, you really don't know what's going to happen. Um, OK, weirdly, this gets rid of a lot of things. Not really a lot, but it gets rid of a couple things <laughs> uh, on their side, which isn't bad. Um, and I think what we're going to do is sack this and this. Uh, Icar Wellspring does draw us a card, which is great. We also get a land here as well. We'll drop that manifold key, because why not? And there we go. We did it. Um, I think that was probably an OK sequence of events. I think we maybe could have done something a little better there. Chaos Wand hitting an opt is not necessarily the best, um, but we win it. When you're good, you're good. And when you're lucky, you're even better. All right, let's move on to game two. All right, guys, here we are for our second game. Uh, I've actually noticed a lot that uh, just in general, a lot of people seem to give up fairly quickly uh, when you're getting like even close to a winning position, not even necessarily like 100% there. It's just generally close, uh, which I think is interesting, but it's OK with me. We got it. Let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Um, I mean, it, not super helpful, but sure. Uh, this is going to be a very good deck, if I had to guess. It's going to be very tricky for us to kind of take this one down. So we're going to do the best we can, but um, excuse me, a very, very scary one for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Golden Egg. It really doesn't matter which we play here, uh, this or the Wellspring. Um, so no stress there. Uh, we're not getting any ramp, which isn't necessarily good. Uh, sculpting steel could be quite good. We'll see how that goes, but, uh, very interesting. There's the Satessin champion, another very, very good card. Let's go ahead and throw this out just to see what we can get. Uh, that's ramp. I'm going to keep it. We kind of need as much ramp as we can get, I think. So, uh, let's go ahead. We'll draw it as well here. Uh, nice to be able to scry and then immediately draw. Not that we can play it, but you know, still kind of nice. All right, I'm assuming we are 100% gonna start taking some massive damage here. Obviously the opponent getting some value already, uh, which, hey, I mean, if you got it, you got it. Um, hmm. All right, so I think it's just replicating ring, as unexciting as that is. Um, what this allows us to do next turn is uh, play either Ugin or Dreamstone Hedron, uh, both of which are actually pretty good options because the Hedron is really going to get us to a position where we can play a lot more stuff. Um, my hope is they tap out here and then we just get to play Ugin and kind of 
kill their biggest thing. The trouble is Sithis uh, Harvest Hand, very good card, not only for its effects, but for the simple fact that it's so cheap. Uh, I mean, they can already take their turn, replay it, and still have more stuff to do uh, if they uh, if they lose it somehow. So just some things to think about. The Sitesan the Champion, excuse me, it's going to be a much cleaner target for Ugin if we can get that down. Um, but they also might have something left up that we do need to think about as well so we'll we'll see uh yep uh we could sacrifice this egg as well to gain a couple life i don't think we need to yet um it really doesn't help us to do i mean it's not bad for us of course life gain is always good but uh, i think we've got better options here um all right so what would we like to do i mean we can just do this or we can do this um you know what I might actually do? Instead of targeting the Satessan champion, because I do anticipate they've got something going on, I'm just going to plus. Um, now, this is like overthinking a bit to the max here, um, but we might be able to kind of get them with this. So I'm going to give it a shot. This also cheapens up everything else in our hands, so I think that's worth it. Okay, so they're going to hit it. Uh, that's not good for us, but it's not the end of the world either. Um, we do just get to replay that later on, so that's fine. Uh, we would love to put that back. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So next turn, seven. Uh, <clears throat> so we might just drop the mascot exhibition. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I was a little concerned that they might have some flash spell. That was kind of my concern there. They could also have a heroic intervention. Um, that's a very common card for any kind of green creature deck, of course. So just some things to think about. Uh, now here, all right, hear me out. We're going to block here. Uh, they have no mana left open. We do take a solid amount of damage there. Um, okay. That's a fun card. Um, that may not have been what they thought we would do, uh, to be honest. Um, that might have been a, a bit of an odd play for them. Doesn't really matter what we pick here, so let's do that. Pro, pro wow, uh, black and red, first strike flying and vigilance. That's pretty good. Um, do we just play that? Uh, we can copy an artifact so they don't okay so they put it in their graveyard so they could get it back that makes sense um or do we just exhibition i think i'm gonna just exhibition next turn we can replay ugin uh but this gives us the most amount of just solid blockers as we need them uh and so i think that that's probably worth it uh no attacks here we could have actually attacked in first just to see if they would do anything um but it looks like they didn't want to, so that's fine. All right, so next turn we can't play Ugin for the record. Maybe Dreamstone Hedron would have been the better play, but that's okay. Uh, this is a very good deck, by the way. I think this is one of the like best decks, quote unquote, in the meta right now, um, which makes a lot of sense because it's very solid. Uh, if they attack with the Satessan Champion, we definitely just block with our little 2-2 with the uh, Meteor Golem underneath it. Um, when we do that, we just get the Meteor Golem and then can just kind of blow up the Satessan Champion if we'd like. They can bring it back with the Elspeth Conqueror's Death if they want, I suppose, uh, but that doesn't seem great. Um, now, is there a, a case for us to like triple block this? I don't think we need to. Although, if we do that, then they can't actually bring some stuff back. We might be able to get them here. Uh, seven. So if we do this, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's exactly enough. Now this is all in. Like we are super all in right now. But you know what? I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it because what this allows us to do is then play the meteor goal and blow up the Elspeth Conqueror's death before they can even get something back. Uh, and in that case. We actually do okay. Oh no. Oh no. Did they have mana left open? Oh, they had the Lanoir Elf. I can't believe that. 
that's okay. Uh, yeah, that was my bad. I didn't put them on having anything, but that's fine. I guess we did still get it though. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Kind of surprised they did that. Um, wait, why did they do that? That was super useless. It didn't, it didn't actually do anything. Did I miss something? I might have missed something. Anyway, let's throw this down. We've got the Meteor Golem to, like we said, to take care of that Elspeth Conqueror's death. This just, it doesn't even the playing field by any means, um, but it does kind of help a little bit in the sense that now they don't just get their, their commander back for free. Um, so hopefully they don't have another way to bring it back because they did stick it in the graveyard. That's generally a scary thing to do, especially when it's so cheap. Um, I would have very quickly just thrown it back in the command zone. Um, I, I don't know. That seems a little odd to me, but that's okay. This does enter the battlefield if we'd like it as a copy of anything, uh, which could be very good. They're going to take the Meteor Golem out of play, though. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. Sure. Curious to see what they do here. They might, yeah, it looks like they're going to take that out. So four, five, six. So that's exactly lethal. Fair enough, opponent. You got us. Uh, that was a very interesting game. I don't think we played badly, uh, but that was interesting. Let's go ahead, guys. I think we got time for one more at the very least. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are. Probably going to be our last game unless this just goes exceptionally quick. But uh, yeah, I mean, we got some ramp. We got some interaction. I think we keep it's not a super exciting hand, if I'm honest, but uh, it it should be kind of interesting. I assume they're going to be a very heavy graveyard deck. Of course, this is Muldrotha. Muldrotha is exceptionally good. Uh, so that's a little scary, but We'll just go ahead and throw this out here. Um, Scavenger Grounds does kind of theoretically solve the problem. Um, it's just an inherent uh, sacrifice for, basically we just sacrifice it, exile all cards from all graveyards, and then they have nothing to replay with Muldrotha. Theoretically that works. We'll see if that actually pans out that way. <laughs> um, but, Oh, nice. So they're planning, at least, to give it Hexproof right off the bat. Uh, very solid. Very solid indeed. Um, we're actually going to go this way uh, and then play the Ratchet Bomb. I do want to start ticking this up as quickly as we can. This is a way that we can get rid of the Mirror Shield if we need to. Um, now, it does actually kill the Mind Stone if we do it that way, so we do need to be very careful about how we do that. Uh, that's pretty solid, uh, but I think we just play Ugin, right? That's just better. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this out there, see what we get. Uh, and then this just becomes free. <laughs> um, so that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, we'll just tap this, get another counter here. And we'll see what happens. This might be a quick game. I don't know. They, I mean, they haven't done much ramping, uh, which is usually kind of the scary thing. Now there is technically a ramper, uh, so that's something. <laughs> um, but they haven't even filled their graveyard yet, really, either, uh, which is kind of interesting. I will pay two just to draw an extra card. I think that's probably worth it. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, so we can actually play Icy Manipulator, tap down the Solemn, and then essentially make it useless. Alternatively, we can just throw this out. Um, I think I actually kind of like the Icy Manipulator play, but I'm actually going to... I'm going to let this hit. If they want to block it, I'm not worried about it. That's fine. Um, that just goes into our hand anyway, so it's like, eh, that's fine. Um, all right, do we want to do anything else? We might want to put a counter on this, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think we're just going to pass the turn here. I don't want to overcommit to the board. My expectation is that they very well could have um, some number, at least, of, of board wipes in this deck. I might be wrong in saying that. I really don't know. Um, but I imagine they've got a, a handful of different things here. So, okay. Uh, very good. Sure. 
Um, so now we icy manipulator something on their turn here can just be one of these. Um, and what that does is just keep them from being able to really block with it. And then we get basically a double activation out of it. Um, do we draw an extra card? I think I still do. Yeah. Ooh, wow. What a card to draw. Um, all right. So let's plus, uh, I guess we could have destroyed stuff, but I, I mean, I, I don't know that we need to. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so let's icy manipulator here. Kind of want to keep those tapped if I can. Um, and let's throw this at this. What this then allows us to do is put Paradox Engine on the field, which is just super good. <laughs> um, yeah. Do this. Uh, we do want to deal with this Garrick pretty quickly, I suppose. So that's something to keep in mind here. But now we've got Ramp on the field. We've got Paradox Engine plus Aetherflux Reservoir, a way to draw extra cards every turn. Like, that's all very good, uh, is all I can say. Now, this is a little scary. They should attack in before activating Garrick. We'll see if they do. Uh, yeah, looks like they're going to. What that means is we do not block. Uh, because if we do, then they actually get the emblem here, and we don't want that. Um, so yes, we do have to take some hits on the Ugin, but I think it's fine. Uh, they're going to zero just to put some more of these guys out. Makes sense. And there's Muldrotha. Uh, and they can go ahead and equip this if they would like. Um, I'm going to let it happen for now just because we it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll auto pay uh, because we can do a little bit with that. Um, so, all right, let's do this. Play this because it's essentially free. Um, and now we gain some life. That's good. Uh, hmm. I think we take this out. Yes, move it to the command zone. Sorry, I was thinking. I'm thinking very hard here. Sorry, guys. Uh, I guess we should have played stuff first. That was kind of dumb, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to do this. So what this does is it does the best job of threatening the Garrick next time it comes down. Um, we can then also ratchet bomb at some point. Uh, no attacks, obviously. I didn't play that or sequence that super well, but that's okay. Uh, we'll see if we can make it happen still. Um, there is the Aether spell bomb. Sure, that's fine. Surprised they didn't do the 4-4, four, four, I guess, but I mean, that's fine. So what do we lose if we pop this off? We lose the eye. We also lose the Mind Stone. Alternatively, we can just kind of keep ticking it up, which we haven't been doing because I was trying to kill the shield. Um, So again, this isn't a situation where we actually want to block. We kind of want to leave it. Uh, yeah. Because they can then emblem. Surprised they didn't attack here. I guess we should have done this first, but that's okay. All right. We could have saved ourselves like two damage there. Again, not sequencing perfectly here. Um, I'm going to crack this, actually. Okay. I'm thinking we may be cracking the Ratchet Bomb to get rid of this uh, Mirror Shield at the end of their turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's throw you out. Let's throw you out. Uh, 
Uh, let's throw you out, because that's going to slow them down a little bit as well. Also gains us some life, and then we'll throw this out, which gains us more life. Um, and what do we take out? I think it just has to be Muldrotha. That is so scary, though, because this Garrick is terrifying. Um... All right, uh, what do we do? I, I have no idea. These This Garrick is such a problem for us. Um, so the reason we have to kill Modrotha, Muldrotha, otherwise they just replay Garrick. If we kill Garrick, uh, or excuse me, if we kill Garrick, they just replay it with Muldrotha. If we kill Muldrotha, they have to play the Muldrotha later on to be able to replay stuff from their graveyard, but they still keep the Garrick, so it's like, it's a bit of a catch-22. Like, we're not in a great position no matter what we do. Um, that being said, so we're going to tap one of these, <clears throat> which we should have done the last turn. That was a bit of a mistake on our end. But all right, so they're going to try and take out Ugin once again. Uh, and I think we might just let it happen. from your graveyard. Uh, we have no creature cards there. Um, I think we just have to let it happen. Um, <clears throat> kind of surprised they went all in at that. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, can they, they can, I believe, just replay Muldrotha. Oh, well that's super scary. Um, yeah, that's terrifying. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, hmm. I have no idea what we're supposed to do here, guys. I think we're we might just be dead, but uh, yeah. I mean, again, I think we just take out this. I guess we can sacrifice. That's something I keep forgetting we have, but um. I think this is part of why I really wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, take some time and try and learn the format a little bit is because there's so much to this format. I mean, looking at just like, hey, you have this tech land, um, like things like that aren't things that I generally have to think about because I'm used to playing a format where things are a lot more focused. And so uh, this time it's a little bit different. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to tap this. <coughs> excuse me. Um, and we'll see what they attack with. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to kill off as many of these little tokens, I suppose, as possible. Uh, and I guess we can actually take care of this because we do have God Pharaoh's gift. <clears throat> That's so much damage. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ugh, I mean, I think we're just dead, but we're giving it a solid run, I think. I definitely missequenced a little bit. Um, yeah. I mean, we definitely missequenced, but they just have a very solid, like, we don't have sweepers. That's a big problem with this list, I think, is because there's no colors, <laughs> we don't really get access to sweepers. Um, which makes sense. I mean, I get it, but like, it's a little difficult, I will say. Um, throw out the weather lights. Throw out God Terra's gifts. <clears throat> Play this. Um... Do this. And yeah, that might be it. Oh, I don't think we got it. Um, so we get a combat. Uh, we do get a 4-4 four, four out of our graveyard since we now have the Palladium Mirror. Um, but that's not great. <laughs> uh yeah i th I mean we're just dead here uh i'm gonna go ahead and concede they've got it we will go ahead and shout about this deck though because there's a lot to talk about here 
All right, guys. Uh, so how do we feel about Ugin the Ineffable? Um, very fun. I like the idea of having kind of a, a, a colorless build. I wanted to give that one a shot. Uh, and I do really like Ugin the Ineffable as the commander for this, um, mostly because how easy it is to then cheapen everything up and then just kind of spit out a ton of stuff. We didn't really get to see it do its thing at the end there. We were perfectly set up. I mean, we had the Paradox Engine. Uh, we had a couple mana rampers even. And the uh, of course, the, the Aether Flux uh, Reservoir as well. We were very close, but we just didn't really draw into stuff that we needed, um, like a Mystic Forge as an example. Mystic Forge could have been amazing there, uh, because what you can theoretically do with that Mystic Forge is then just keep playing stuff off the top of the deck, and because they're cheapened up with Ugin, and we've got a couple mana rampers on the field, anything for like... I'll say four or less mana, which is a substantial portion of the deck, is basically going to be free. Uh, not to mention, if we get more mana rampers, it that makes that even easier. Uh, and so the only big sweeper that we really have, I suppose, is uh, Ugin the, the Spirit Dragon, which unfortunately we did not get. Uh, if we had, I think we could have won that. I think. Would have been very tricky, but we would have been able to exile essentially their board um, with a very strong backup on our end. Uh, so I think we potentially could have made that happen, but eh, it's okay. First two games were wins. I feel pretty good about this, guys. I'm really liking the format. I hope you guys are. It's basically like Commander Light, in my opinion. Uh, and so it's kind of fun to see where this one goes. But guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're okay with this kind of new direction, this new format that we're jumping into wholeheartedly here um it's it's really fun i highly recommend it because it really is a great time but thank you guys so much again for watching please do subscribe if you are not already like the video if you enjoyed it and i'll see you very soon for some more gameplay videos